get these casters out of here, the better. Let's go. G2 taking on North, the third and final map in this series, and Betway still leaning in favor of the G2 boys. Yeah, the point I was going to make was it was so great going to overtime in the first map. We knew we were going to have a banging day after Astralis. We're taken to OT by Heroic, but obviously interrupted by uh, my throat. And I guess, yeah, everything in it. Right now, it's a third map of the series. It's G2 North, and it is Dust 2, a slow crawl down lower. And up on the catwalk with that smoke as it fades here for G2. Luckily, for them at least, no one's watching mid. North have no idea any of this is going down, and G2 are setting up on catwalk for an A execute. Yeah, look like I want to try and run the gauntlet here short side. Cajun B. First man in response, MSL is going to get pressured and Cajun answer it as best he can. We'll put one up on the board, but this A site now still belongs to G2. Jax is actually hungry for a little bit more and why the hell not? That's his third kill of the round. He's found absolutely everyone thus far. Next is holding short on Catwalk and he's going to find the remaining twos. The G2, they get this pistol on the board and they look for a strong start here on Dust. Yeah, no more choking, moving on. We've, we've all taken a sip of water. We all had a breather, Harry, and well, hopefully North are feeling ready for this third and final map as well. Came storming out of the gates back on the previous train, or, or Inferno rather, and uh, well, G2, very accomplished team on this map. You know, bad win percentage if you look at the numbers, and and they're most, well play or most played as well, which is really weird to see, but uh, yeah, they've got some scalps on this map. They've taken down some of the big dogs, so North should be a little bit worried here. They've at least let, let it through, let it slip into this series. So I'm sure North have a game plan, but right now, whatever plan they had in this round is getting swiftly taken apart. G2 flashed into B, and that one flash push from Amanek has just won the round. It's cleared out the site. I mean, Jax is getting kills anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but now G2 can bring the bomb inside of B and know that there's no way that North can stop them. This is not a retake round. It's one where North are going to try and save and get away with guns. But Nexa, he's set up to deny exactly that factor. I just can't believe we opened this death segment with... <laughs> I'm trying to move past with, with me just talking, but no noise. And then you just coughing is your yeah. point. That's pretty stellar. I've never done that as well. You know? We've I've, really outdone yeah. ourselves on this one. You know? I don't think we can top it. It's I really a day don't. for first, Harry. Uh, it is a day for first. And MSL. I was hoping something sick was going to happen because then I could have said, well, that's a first. And it would have been cool. It would have linked together. But yeah, that's not what ended up happening. G2, they find themselves that conversion. They go 2-0 up, and now there's no money for North. So this is where G2 should just kind of breeze pretty easily through this round to take the 3-0 lead before the rifles come in. Yeah, not what they're going to cross a couple B, but you'll notice they're all hanging around in middle, so it's only them trying to deceive G2. Either about to pop mid with no flash or wait for G2 to walk through the doors and have this heavy crossfire. Obviously, that is contingent on G2 actually pushing this position. Who knows whether that is likely in this round as they hold a very slow default. Flashing Hunter up catwalk. Very methodical. We're going to see North, North collapse on middle here all together with the USPs. Now, don't expect too much to go on here despite the sheer numbers of North in mid. If you don't land that immediate shot, well, you know G2 will, and suddenly aim punch becomes a problem. Christo dead, and G2 do get that conversion with no issue. 3-0 lead here on the T side of Dust2, the final map of this series. And North coming in with their first rifle round, looking to, looking to get on the board. Yeah, let's see what kind of heat they can bring. I like that we have this orp out immediately on MSL, right? He's not wasting any time, and he's going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Kenny. He's only donning the scout in this round. It is an attempt at the bonus from G2. They had a lot of rifles at the end of the one prior. So being maintained is really this MAG-10 and scout combination. And what are they going to look to do with this? How are they going to try and make it effective? 
They might try and go for this catwalk play. I'd love to see the Mac 10 player either just like barrel out cat almost immediately or attempt this CT drop. And I think, you know, with how G2 play, they're big fans of dropping yeah. CT. So let's keep an eye on it. With that kill coming in, they will get the trade onto MSL. And now they look to pick up the pace. There's no need for a CT drop anymore because you've dealt with MSL. He was the real only threat that lurked inside of this site. So they're going to get this bomb planted and take up position for the four on four. A key player here is going to be Amanek, right? Waiting in these lower tunnels. If he can catch a good timing and deal with some of these players on rotation, especially if he's not given any fights catwalk, it's just eliminating uh, the, the kind of number of places that North could be coming from. G2 know that no one's cat. They're afforded the opportunity to just swing wide on all of these peaks. And Amanek comes in at the very, very end to mop it up. So I absolutely love what we just saw from G2 in that round there. Yeah, really nice setup, right? Amanek's position, it, it, it feels like it doesn't have any value there, but that's only because North don't attempt to, to you know, take catwalk. If It's very common CCTs push middle when they lose A because you can get up cat very fast, but that's why you want a lower player cutting off that, that likelihood there. Amanek makes it slow. He comes in with a backstab and he finds G2 a fourth. A little tag from Kenny, receives a grenade, but not too much damage, and Chris Fu is on 17. Remember, this is only an eco for North, so not really imagining much is going to come of this round for the Danes. But that is dangerous, because G2, uh, G2 going potentially 5-0 up here on the T side. They are going to be in the full swing of things. I think North are going to have a very tough time getting, getting in this map, getting in Dust 2, right? Even though G2 have been weak on it at the past, you know, they've had highs and they've had lows. It's really an up and down affair. And G2 may have started this series slow with a bit of a, an underwhelming vertigo and a repetitive T side, always hitting A. But Inferno was a far better affair and Dust 2 start is certainly looking good as well. North, only one player towards that A site. It's Cajun. And the cells pushed in on long. We have a double B setup and... Uh, I mean, it's not like North Bank are winning this round anyway, but now they certainly won't. MSL's dead, Cajun is stuck in spawn, and G2 are getting closer and closer to the site. Oh, Cajun already passed here, bud. They're already in the site. That doesn't really bode well there for the, uh, the North guys that were remaining. Not able to find anything with these pistols. There is still a reinvestment coming through for North. One of the things that's a little bit scary is that usually with games where the scoreline is like 5-0 and in favor of one team, the rounds have at least been competitive. So as the CTs, you've got like a potential bit of economic break to look forward to. And that's just not the case for North. These rounds have all been very, very dominant. And this means that North are really going to have to grind their way through to get back into this game. Like, you've got to go through a big bank account on G2 before you're just reaping the rewards of a broken economy. And, you know, picking up the man advantage in this round is a nice way to start it. At the very, very least, it's left North in a five on four. But only one man here at the B side of the map. AZ is available for a fast rotation. Right now, they're entrusting Gade with a hell of a lot. He does still have a smoke to offer up. So if he can look to drop that as his push comes in, they will have to nice. go through it. But wow. Jax just holds W and runs the gauntlet. AZ on the chopping block next. And Amanek vests him with only the Mac 10 to his name. This is already a save for North. They've got an AWP in the retake, two rifles. Bye-bye, North. They've got to try and hold on to this. Yeah. And it's a six on the board for G2. That's heartbreaking, man. You get the man advantage. You take one out of the equation early on. You have a nice little setup over at B with, like, Gade playing the close smoke like that. Yeah. But Jack's just running straight up, taking that duel, holding W and sprinting with left click held. He's able to get them into the site. And from then on in, the moment the kill comes in onto AZ, the round is done. Yeah, and AZ had no head armor, right? So instant MAC-10 kill, no worry, despite it being an AWP. And yeah, for Gade there, that's like a great play. If you do it at the start of the round and G2 are like trying to spot or trying to send an AWP there or, or, or just peeking towards a plat. But if they go in with the intention of committing behind a rush, no matter what happens, right? Whether a molly comes down or not, you know Jax is just going to run the gauntlet there. And he does not stop. What a, what a play from Jax to just full on W mouse one. Like that's not accurate at all. And he gets away with a kill onto Gade through the smoke. So a random stray bullet, but sometimes that's all you need to get up 6-0. and oh. G2 are in pole position. Nice shot. Kenny hits AZ on the cross down to 10. And he is one of those B players. So 
Molotov comes down, denies a rush that G2 definitely wanted. Without a doubt, Kenny would have called that he hit that shot. Sometimes you can just see it, you can feel it. With a gap in the smoke, that was enough info for Kenny S to take a kill. Not quite, though. Could still be an early B hit for G2. They are centered outside of this site. Two players working catwalk, trying to take control. And North are doubled long. They will peel MSL away, but only to watch Cat from car because there's no secondary A player. Cajun is actually in CT watching for this mid to B. Can call if he gets smoked off as well. But right now, Hunter's selling that fake, and G2 are just going to full commit. Yeah, full send into the B bomb site. AZ, who was tagged on the cross, is here alongside Gator. Between them, they've got to put up quite the resistance. They are able to do it. Hunter, waiting in mid, cuts off one of these players in rotation, and that's left G2 oh, in a two no. on two. Christo has just missed the timing on this mid pick. Not able to get that trade. Bomb plant now in for the G2 squad. An AWP on MSL in this retake. But Hunter. Mopped up down in the lower tunnels. Now North is spurred on. Kenny takes the window, piece, goes back in. And that there is very overzealous from Kenny. Flash and MSL finds the kill, fully blind. He gets that one offered up on a silver platter. North are going to come in with their first round here on the CT side of round number seven. The fact that G2 even made that close, I think, is impressive, right? We have a good hold there for North for a change. Not only were Gay playing close to, to the car, but AZ there as well. And they put up multiple kills before Kenny you know, comes through the smoke. He has to make a hero play to get that trade onto AZ. And while he does get away with it, it's uh, a two on two. The G2 aren't able to close out the post plan, post plan rather. Double all for North, does continue as they find their first round. Can they build upon it or will it be a one and done? That's always the fear, right? Your money could just be swept out from underneath them, uh, underneath you if you lose this follow-up round. And G2 want to go for a quick mid to be. AZ is only just getting up into the window. He's going to post up. You will see the smoke come down. North know what's going on, but can they stop it? AZ given a chance there, but not able to connect the shot. It's going to be Gade opening up again, but Jax deals with him. And there's the pincer from Tunnels catching. The one player left inside of the site. Can you guess what's going to happen here for North? If you guess save, then you probably guess correctly. This round is off the cards. And this is one of the problems, I think, for North with Dust2 being this third map. You know, you're, you're, you're coming into this with Christo in the roster. Uh, you know, you've had to make adjustments undoubtedly all across the map. But I think Dust2, more than most other maps in the pool right now, it really can just feel like you get dominated sometimes by this T side. And it's very, very hard to offer up solutions. I think especially, you know, you're up against G2 on their most played yeah. map. One that they've really had to bring a lot of kind of... Uh, a lot of a spotlight to it, right? Because they've been on every side of the coin on Dust2. They, they've been the team that's getting wrecked and that has had to come back. They've been the team that loses in, you know, like close 16-14s. They've been the team that dominates here. They've seen it all. They've kind of explored all faucets of Dust2 and the ebbs and flows of it. And, you know, North... They're usually all right on this map as well, but I think it is just the, the added stress of having... A, a different fifth man in the server. Yeah. And, and also, you can't really like use your in-game leader on the CT side if G2 are playing the way they are. They're just switching it up every round, man. They're not. They're just playing spawns, and and that means you know you're a lot of the time you're gambling if you're North, right? Like, last round, North put three long, and you know that's just a gamble. You're just hoping that G2 have long spawns and take it, but instead G2 hit quick mid, quick mid to be, and because North are triple long, they have no one in mid or CT. So it's a bit <laughs> of a mess. As is this round, trades somehow go the way of G2. On this long fight with the flashes and now they have a three or four on three rather g2 if they group and hit b that is just painful for north and it all comes down to this kill from amanek you won't get it gade safely smokes him off but there's an example of when that close play from gade is really good right you know if, if someone's trying to spot or ascertain whether they can hit b gade's gonna get that smoke down before you can react but if g2 are ready to rush there then gabe would again be in a you know real problematic position now right now hunter is selling an a fake with the orb on his own on long. So he should be the first person to shoot unless he wants to come in on this lug. But either one works because no one's watching this position. He has a free sight towards CT. That smoke, that's going to change everything. That might even draw North out of the B bomb site. Yeah, and it's, I mean, if Hunter's able to get a kill from this position, I think North fall for it, hook, line, and sink. And now they see there's only they one, but Gade's already left B. And now the warning signals are going off. You can hear them in Gade's head. They're sounding. The alarm is ringing out, and Gade has got to respond. He will put one up on the board, a two-on-three, a very doable round for North, thanks to that kill from Gade. 
It's kept them competitive. It's kept them in this one. These man advantages haven't always translated to a victory for North. So let's see if G2 can hold down this B site. They've got it, the bomb planted. It is planted for tunnels, and Amanek is trying to get across. Next, they're getting spammed in through the door. Both players going to set up over here at car side. They're going to try and bait and switch this. They've got Nexa peeking, and that's why Amanek is hidden here. They're hoping that when they deal with Nexa, they discount Amanek. And Nexa, all he's got to be is a good distraction. He gets one, but that's all he needed to get. Now, Amanek peeking over the top, only good for uh -oh. one. It's going to be close. It's no. down to the wire, but they I don't think they've it. got it. Yeah, this... Oh, oh, maybe. Oh, just about north, a second on the board. Just barely. Amanek not able to do enough from his little hidey hole over in the corner. And so north, two on the board now. It's another B-side retake that goes their way. Yeah, little does G2 know it, but they they had the perfect timing. They could have won that round, uh, I think, a lot cleaner, but they, they delay for so long in the tunnels, right? Gain leaves B, goes to mid, stops and waits, and then still I, has time to come I back almost, to B and get that kill as G2 commit. I almost felt like there was a moment there where, where G2 were considering going back to A because Hunter had gotten so deep down long, right? And he spotted that no one is on this yeah, A side. Maybe. And so it felt like, you know, because that, that was right when the slowdown came in. And obviously they're waiting for Hunter to make contact, right? But at the same time, like the moment he doesn't get any, there must have been that, that kind That's of thought in their scary. head, right? Oh goodness, are we gonna walk into a B stack here? Then Hunter dies and then they go, oh, okay, well maybe not. We gotta go, we got no other choices. Cause that's the thing, you don't know what uh, information the enemies have. So it goes both ways. Like, uh, you know, what if uh, hypothetically North was stacked B there and then off the back of Hunter making a smoke go down, North rotated everyone off, right? Like, you know, you, you never know if you're G2 and you don't wanna, you don't wanna walk into a, a full on you know, gamble stack save, right? Uh, one of those rounds where you lose too early and you just put three on a bomb site and, and gamble and go, okay, if they come our way, we win the round. If they don't, we save. Right? T2 didn't want to walk into that. So you know, that is the, the other side of the coin, but it does cost them their life and their round. North find two, and they're looking for more. Gay's going to have to smoke the door. Common setup on the CT mid to B just to deny another entrance to that site, but that's not where G2 want. They're going to take A, and they've dropped a player into spawn. NSL doesn't know. He's going to flick, though. Finds Jax after 90 damage done by the AK. Christo has a, uh, the long advantage. He's a shadow, takes down Nexa. MSL repeaks off the back of a flash and finds Hunter. And one by one, this round is falling apart. The bomb has been lost for G2. They may have a man in CT, but they don't have mid. And AZ's firing off all shots left and right. Amanex missed his chance. And Kenny might just want to save. Yeah, and even getting away with this AWP is a pretty tenuous subject. I think he should be okay. There are players nearby. Yeah, luckily enough, no one headed down into the lower tunnels. So Kenny does survive. He does get to hold on to his coveted AWP. This was a stellar hold from MSL. It feels like we've just been waiting for this AWP to kind of get going over here for the CT side, for the North squad. And in that round there, it really does arrive and in a very big way. So hopefully this is where... Wow, <laughs> that's actually wild. That's crazy. Yeah, that kind of just cut me off. More Mac 10 kills than he does USP and Glock kills combined. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that's absolutely mad. You know, just I guess when he was in NA, NA, he was just farming on anti ecos every round. Like, gotta get the, them eeks. He learned from from Trace himself. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of crazy, right? But not a pistol player is Amanek. More of an SMG genius or SM genius. They did it for me there and I still bottled it. 7 3 though, 10 rounds deep, and North is starting to come alive. Can they keep things up and over? Double orb in through middle. Nessal just trying to fight. He hits a shot through the door. He can't even see Hunter, but make it. Hey, got a re peek off the back of Jax's flash, and that's another frag going the way of North. Five on three. Blink and you miss it. This round is rolling out of control of G2. They need to get someone back in pilot of this ship. Christos dropped next round long. Two play. Oh no. Oh dear. Oh. What, could, what else can you do, really, if you're G2 here? This one's done. Yeah, anybody. You may be good. It may be your birthday, but no presents from Cajun. Yeah, this is North starting to warm up, starting to get into the swing of things here on Dust. 
And you know, it so often feels like at the minute, it only takes you to get a few rounds on the board to start to get back into the swing of things. Yeah. And that is really where the uh, momentum can start to side with you. North, this went from being a game where they were seven, or sorry, six and O oh down at one point in time. Now four to seven, and this is the road to recovery here for North. MSL is going aggressive at long, and he's got Christo Ooh. with him, but Jax is already on the angle. That's why MSL is here to guarantee that this is kept in a four on four, kept it even odds. He's done his part of the bargain in this round. Yeah, that's got to feel rough for Christo. MSL just goes, dude, put push here. He dies. MSL trades. Cheers, buddy. Like, but you know, if you're Christo there, you just die. You know, a valiant death but also one where you really don't feel like you have an impact into the round. Luckily, don't need any impact because North are going to do it without you. Four on two. Cajuns drop next to it long. This AWP again firing off our MSL gets a cat kill. And just like that, it's G2 and a two on four. Kenny and Amanek flashing their way up towards the A site. They've got to beat this AWP. That's the big problem. MSL falling. Oh, he's going back in with a flash. It's excellent. As Amanek peeks, he gets blinded. Can't see a thing. MSL hanging around on the corner. No rush. Kenny has been left in so many of these one-on-fives, and it has just not happened. It's not materialized. He's going to give it a go with a fake part as well, forcing the kill, but the trade is so quick. Cajun, nice shot from, uh, from Long with the AK. Does at least keep that round north. But won't save that second up. They still get away with one at a bare minimum. Yeah, these orbs have been absolutely stellar from north, right? Yeah. They've been so key in every one of these rounds that have been picked up. That's interesting. Kind of ironic as well when you think about the staple map that Dust 2 is. <laughs> When's Dust 4? That's my question. Skip the third. Skip the... Not the sequel. The trio. The trilogy. The trequel. Trequel. That works. That's like a really sweet sauce, isn't it? It is, man. <laughs> well, let's get into this one, Trequel. Seven on the board for G2. Five for North. The Danes starting to stumble back to their feet. And I want to see more from Kenny, man. I feel like, you know, if you want anyone to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with MSL, we're looking at him. And as you say, he's been left in these 1v5s pretty much all the time for G2 in these last few rounds. So let's see Kenny try and get a bit more proactive. If the rest of his team are going to be running in and dying first, maybe he at least beats them to it. Yeah, I definitely would like to see this orb, you know, go for those opening picks, go for those brazen plays that Kenny is known for. Flash him into an angle, let him do something wild. Right now, we haven't really seen his AWP come into all too much success ever since North started building. And what a score they've built. Three on B in this one. Means they don't need to play heavy mid because Gade is spotting it from the doors and they have two inside of the site. This might be a B play given the looks of things. She too, though, taking catwalk. You can always drop off into mid to B. That's a classic. They smoke both sides. They're going to set Jax up, feeling this one out, seeing where this round goes. It looks like an A play after all with Amanek coming back in from long. With the mid to B smoke, Jax can go through it towards CT spawn. No one's watching this as well. They don't need to throw anyone on chat to drop CT. They're already in CT. And Nexa hits a blinding shot onto MSL on that A long position. G2 get a bomb plant. And Christo, he's looking for that long play. He's wondering where it is. But Amanek is waiting for this exact push. Christo wins, it, uh, wins the battle and has full util and a kit for the retake. This round has just started now for North. And they want nothing to do with it. Yeah, they decide to back on out. They decide, you know what? G2 can have a freebie. They want to try and keep this money in a nice place. I, I, I will say uh, yeah, that. Like... I'm so surprised they've done this. There's two rounds after the half. They've got as much money as you need. They can buy. They could lose everyone here and still buy up. I think a lot of it is the fact that they have three AKs alongside this AWP. But at this point, there's only a couple of rounds left of the half. Like, you know, it feels. Feels yeah, like you know, I, get, I guess alternative for that is that there were already three players at this B side of the map. So maybe it's just, you know, you're so worried about the rotations taking a long time. You also know that G2 play aggressive in CT every now and again, right? Dropping down from Catwalk. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I guess I as well, at that point in time, really. when those three players are committed to the save in B, Christo hadn't yet won his fight at long, so... Yeah, I think it was just one of those cases where the decision is already made and you don't want to be scrambling, having already wasted you yeah. know, 15 seconds off the clock. 
And right there is going back to the point of like gambles and how it's just favored G2 in this game so far. North, they put 3B right there. G2 don't hit it. North have to save and save in a round that they probably could have won. But here's where the gamble sometimes comes up in your favor, Harry. What have we got? Triple B. Where is G2 going? B. All looks pretty good for North right now. Yeah, it really does, especially because they've been very, very stubborn with these rotations, right? Not unless they're feeling the pressure, then maybe they crack a little bit sooner. But right now, they are very, very content to just keep this three-man B-hold. There is Hunter, who tried to fake over it short earlier on, just throwing a bit of utility that way, but it's not caused anyone to budge. A missed shot from AZ. Oh, now the rest dear. of the gang at B have nice. to step up. A good spray from Gade, and that softened them up. At the very, very least, Kenny is going to best AZ, but Hunter's been removed. It's Kenny S once again in a 1v3. And he's not accounting for the man still in the site. He's instead checking car. This has given a lot of room over to Cajun B. Rotations Ooh, are in. Nice. Kenny first kill, but there's still so many bodies to find. He's trying to make it stylish for us. Kenny will take the clutch at this point. Smoke goes down. He's going to creep up close to it. 30 seconds, and he sees a passageway to get through these doors. He looked like he was considering it for a moment. Still looking to isolate these fights, and there is a man trapped in the bomb site. But Kenny is not looking that way, and so it is going to be the round going in favor of North. Yeah, it's a big stack there, and North it really pays off for North. Great spray from Gade, as you said, he did so much damage, even though he only got one kill. The damage he does means a Molotov fo follows up with a frag, someone spam gets one, and, and yeah, North just closed it off the back of that. Kenny was definitely given an opportunity there, but won't be able to take it. Amanek does buy armor. I was hesitating. Hesitating for a second. Gate spots mid, sees nothing. Runs right back safely into B. Doesn't want that site to be lost here in the last of the half, especially when G2 have a low buy. I think the fact that Kenny's not on the orb here could be a blessing in disguise. Not to say that you know Kenny's been necessarily having a pro having problems, but G2 haven't been getting entries, and so Kenny's orb doesn't really ever come into play, right? It's just stuck in one on fours and one on fives. So yeah, G2 have been having a rough time at even getting opening kills in the latter stage of this half. So Kenny on a rifle, maybe he's the guy who can get the opener. Maybe he can assist G2 in that sense. Um, catwalk they go. Max 10 leading the charge on the back of Jax. A little grenade from Cajun. He will be able to back up to the site and play crossfire with the AWP on MSL. But the question is, do G2 still want to go? Because, of course, they can throw this util again and back up into a mid to B with Amanek in the tunnels and a man watching the mid doors. That seems like the game plan. Throwing a player into CT. MSL knows, but if anything, he should know now where the bomb is going. Amanek's been dropped, and this is very clear for G2. Gade, what can he do? He does have AZ to help him out, and they are getting wrapped on. See, the flash is... Yeah, actually, it's Nexus Flash that bind, blinded Jack. So not that great if you're G2, but fantastic if you're North. It's left him in a three-on-three three here to round out the half. And Cajun, Christo, and MSL left for the Danish side. They're going to start to creep on up here. Two players veering away and heading in through the tunnels. But G2 have got everyone committed into the site. Nexa with this off is just holding down the angle. Oh. Flashed off of it only for a moment, but that's going to give some time here for North to work their way up through the tunnels. Next to that molly is going to force him into the open, and MSL cuts him down, but time is the problem for MSL. Wow. There's not enough of it, and it's hard for G2, and he's looking to keep that fire burning here heading into the second. G2 about to begin their CT side, currently sporting a three-round lead over North. This is where we see if it's going to be dominance continuing for G2, or if North still have some fight left in them. Oh, a little delayed on the cat boost, as cat boosts often are, but they will get into play, and G2 have two men to the middle fast, or at least faster than that of North. Flash out from next in mid, sets these players up to fight. Jax looks at the top side, it's nothing. They're coming from lower, and he's not being quiet about his position either. Spamming with the P2K, so not even silent shots here. Hunter, he is silent. Silent and dead. Oh dear, Jack's deleted now. He has no teammate to help him out. Hunter, oh, he's gone white. He's dropped everyone. He's killed the bomb as well. I thought that was a bait and switch. Instead, it's just the switch and Hunter switches on. Getting three, sending the bomb back towards B. Amanek has peeled out the site. He needs to reconsider right here and right now. Next are alongside him. They've cleared this one out. They need to get back into B because right now North are heading there. 
Yeah, they might just stroll into a site where nobody's home. Thankfully, G2, they've seen the lights they're on. They've tried to go back in, and now they get the info that this is where the play's coming in. Amanek was dinked on his first and only peek into the site. It's a good job that Nexa didn't overextend and go down there, because now it's left G2 with this three on two. Christo is going to be planting this bomb. Him and Cajun, they've got to combine for this clutch to get North into this game again in the second half. I'm taking away. Christo keeping an eye on the tunnels. There's players there trying to move in for the kill, but that's where Cajun B can spring his little trap. And now down to the 1v1. Christo, no new blood on the block. And Kenny, seasoned veteran of the French scene, up against him on the other side. Christo just buying time, oh, toying with Kenny dear. S. But Kenny does it best. Defuse comes on in, and G2, they're going to reach double digits. 10 on the board. And the birthday boy, well, it's him bringing the goods in the server. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta worry, right? Or wonder, like, what's Chris do? What's going through his mind there? Is he pressing the scoreboard and looks at the one-on-one -on -one between him and Kenny S? Right, you can't be feeling too confident. He tries a lot of times to take the fight, but Kenny will remain tall, jumping above the box and firing death down from above. Puts G2 onto 10. Lead is locked in and double digits alongside it. North, of course, in the second round. And it's delaying this long take. They're going to be flashing uh, out, or at least MSL is. But, oh, God, how does Jax do that much damage with a jump peak? Christo's put down to 50, tries to push the smoke. Instead, he gets bullets in his face. North, they're going to get out of long. They want nothing to do with this place anymore. It's not treating them kindly. And in all of this time, someone could have pushed elsewhere. So they need to remain aware of this map. Cajun's in tunnel, watching lower and denying an upper aggressive player. Amanek isn't going for it, though. G2 don't feel the need to be aggressive with a man advantage. They can wait for North to come to them, and North will. Hunter's still sat on this Molotov as well. He might look... Oh, that's a brutal nade from Kenny. And now the Molly goes out. I love that he delays it. Not only does it let the nade do damage first, but it also splits this push in half. One player is trapped on the catwalk, and that was Cajun. He still runs through the Molly right at the very end, and that almost finishes him off. G2, stellar utility work there in the A-bomb site. The order in which the utility went out, the timing on it, everything about it was perfect. And it completely cancels out that attempt at the round from North. And those palm tree flashes again, I love I love talking about them because they're so good. When Kenny's sitting goose throwing the flashes into the tree, the tree isn't a physical model in the game. So not only does it not block the flashes, but it physically blocks the flashes. So North can't see them go out in the first place. They have nothing to turn. They can't avoid them. And North with full blind coming up catwalk walk there. This time they're going to have another nade come their way and boy does it have results. Five players put in the red and Kenny makes them all dead. It's an ace from him but you got to give a little shout out to Hunter as well who certainly lit them up. Just look at this. Despicable. Cool. Nice little Glock Antico ace from Kenny. And 12-6, G2 four away from doing it. North have had no rounds in the second half. It's either now or nothing. Someone oh, Hunter are gonna hear these footsteps. Knows that they're down in lower tunnels and looking to get out of mid. Now that flash has completely wrecked G2. My goodness, that tower gets dismantled and now Five on three, North, they're very, very happy with the way this round has started. That flash finding a double, not something that happens every day. So what are they gonna do with this man advantage? They'll peel on back into the B site early on. They have Cajun B already holding onto the upper tunnels. There is a smoke here, but it's starting to dissipate and no one from G2 is present at this B bomb site. North are just going to walk on in, and this is probably just a save for G2. This doesn't really feel like a round you can attempt. Nexa is here, oh. and he will put up one, but that's the end of his journey. The nade of Kenny doesn't find too much damage, if any, actually. Um, bomb plant now found for North. This is just the save call for G2. They want to keep this AWP out. They want to keep their money in good standing. Yeah, the reason you hang around there, even for a second, is you know that North aren't going to get aggressive and give you kills. But if they do, 
well, those are the kills you want, right? If North are going to plant B and push window or push door, and, and then you can kill them, well, that just sets you up to retake the round, right? If North throw two players at you, suddenly you're, you're favoured. So and that's a, an option, but not a reality. North aren't going to make those silly mistakes, and they safely convert this round on B. Moving away as the bomb explodes. Seven rounds for North. That's first T round taken. How many more are in store for North? it do or die backs up against the wall g2 still with a bit of cash to invest and they will do so no orb actually sorry there is one rather and msl's got it got it on the t side as well kenny will be taking his to long on his own no need for support heavy cat play and az's not ready for the pace it's quick in the face hunters found a kill and g2 just as soon as they get there as soon as they leave they are out of there like a bang and with a man advantage north now have to pull this one back yeah, this can feel horrible as well, right? Because everyone here for North is like running down mid with such purpose. They all look like they wanted to try and contest this cat area. And now that that hasn't gone their way, whatever they had planned in this round, well, it's out the window. And Christo, oh. he's just been holding on to long all round. The timing here couldn't be worse <gasps> for him. Oh, oh Jax has just seen it I as know. well. And now he's rubbing his hands together. He knows they've got North right where they want them. And actually, Hunter trying to steal that frag away <laughs> almost ends up blocking the shots needed. However, it is still the kill for G2. And now for North, this is scary because yeah. you've just seen that G2 saw you going this way. You're already anticipating that they are primed. They are ready to go at this A bomb site for the catwalk push. Oh, and by the way, Jax is just doing it again. He's here again. And, and they forgot about him. They forgot about Jax. And that's a mistake they're not going to make the second time around. A nice flick from MSL. But it's only one in a sea of G2 players. He has to go above it all now. MSL, orp in hand, and Kenny swings wide. 13 on the board now for G2. And looking to lay this one to rest. There is still a buy available to North. Still money in the chamber, but it's not going to be lasting long if this victory does not go the way of North in this round. Yeah, exactly right. And that's why North are taking a second to buy up. They've even got a pause coming in. I think that's a, a great call, the right round for it. The first they've even called. So, yeah, I mean, North, this is it. Christo can drop the orb and they can buy up full. It can be a decent buy. You know, it's just going to be a lacking utility on, on a couple of players. But that's fine. You've got three full sets at bare minimum. In fact, four, because MSL's taken a Galil and no one's dropped an orb. Not yet, at least, unless Christo wants to trade. Really would be receiving the worst end of the stick, but nope. He's going to buy up his own util and AK. Hunter has 420 utility damage after that dunk on short. Sounds about right. Was pretty lit, so. Heard Trace laugh from the other room at that. He appreciated it. North, uh, fast long take. They got the spawns, they're gonna go quick. Yes, indeed. They're picking up the pace. They get players into pit. Now, Jax and Hunter are both playing on the other side of the smoke. That's risky, because this will get wall bang sometimes. However, with Kenny drawing the attention away of the car, they are so fixated on guaranteeing go. this kill that maybe there's some space for Jax. He's flashed Ooh. into long, but a quick flick from Christo, and he is bid farewell. And advantage for North in a very big way. Five on three now. And they're going to slow it right down. Committing though, and G2 should be ready for it. Clearing out tunnels is next. Uh, it's going to be a long way away though. It's down to Amanek on the site. Can't put up anything. One kill, that's it. Hunter giving away his position for with a good grenade, but it's not going to be worth it. No one's low. No job to finish. Except this round, maybe. That's if G2 want to commit. Two players coming. Next is up cap. Missing the timing on the player that escapes. And that's a big runaway as well from whoever that was. I think it was AZ. The fact that he even gets away from that fight has put him safely inside of A and G2 have saved as a result. If they killed him, maybe they would have gone for it. And that could have been a win, undoubtedly. So G2 giving North 8 here. Respecting the Danes when they should. And while it's not back-to-back -back rounds for North, it's at least uh, rounds taken with one in the middle from G2. At this point, 
North will take whatever they can get. Here's something interesting. You know how we were saying it feels like Jax is just holding W and running into bomb sites? Yeah. Well, that was T side, obviously, not so much now, but you, you get what I mean. He's not actually a W player. He's an arrow key player. Oh, is he a left-handed uh, mouse user? Uh, or, is he, or has he just moved his keyboard all the way along? That's the thing. That doesn't really make sense unless you have a short... Well, if you have a short keyboard, you don't have the arrow keys. So I always wonder, like, if you're using arrow keys, how far up is your keyboard? Is it dangling off the table? Do, do you even have the letters WASD? Are they even there? Who knows? Yeah, he is right-handed. He just uses the the arrow key. Interesting one. Yeah, 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 you're not going to get away with that on old school lands, I don't think. Only big desks allowed here. At least for Amanet. Or Jax, was this rather? Jax. Jax. I respect it anyway. I've seen weirder binds in my time. Machine being one of them. But he is left-handed, so we'll cut him some slack. Oh, no, they are looking to try and pick up the slack in this round. They've lost AZ early on. There's a man advantage here for G2, and Jackson tucked himself in oh. on the blue bin. And he's looking, perhaps, for a win here at long. He's gone ahead and removed one from the equation, and now there's even more players looking to deal with him. But Jax has been so pesky, just kept so mobile. And they will wide swing. They do deal with Jax. Oh. This AWP is trained in on the corner, so Amanek is very much relying on a flash that's wow. never going to arrive. Gabe with a stellar peak, MSL as well. And it all falls onto Kenny. 1v2, he needs four kills in this round. He needs a 4K if he wants to pick up a 14th. 4G2, smoke goes down, flashes in on the back of it. Kenny trying to get up in their face. He's already passed the CT smoke. Hello. Kenny doesn't play by the rules. He's getting deep in this site. MSL's at long, and Kenny has caught the most unreal timing. Turns around, MSL now on the platform. Oh, he doesn't know. Kenny doesn't know. And this bomb, he's gonna figure it out. Kenny's deduced it. Detective Kenny S is on the case, and he's tried to crack it wide open. But MSL is so elusive back at long. A ninth on the board for North as they've stolen one away from G2. How are North winning these rounds? It's looking like lost rounds. It's looking like four on threes that G2 are in full control of. That double long setup, G2, they they got stuck. They wanted to play aggressive. Then they realized the AWP was there and they couldn't play, uh, peek into it because they would die. They get stuck trying to fall back. I mean, it's a mess from G2. And at that point, Kenny can't close it. A nice try, but North, they are taking this game the distance. They are making it the full 30. They don't want to go down without a fight. At least for the short term, they have broken G2's money in this round. It's Deagles. That's it. Bit of Kevlar and Hunter. He's the only one, though. Should be looking for double digits for North by the end of this round. MSL posting up, and Jax has seen it. He can't stop it. And here's, here's why Long sucks for CTs, because you want that info. You want it desperately, but you don't have it. Luckily, G2 get it other ways by pushing in middle. They have full flank this long position. Gabe is watching for the door play. How long will he stay, though? Could timing be the bearer of bad news? Nope, Gabe spots one. Smoke available if he wants to stall them out, but he might do it later in the round. Look, if he fights currently, there's Hunter gone, the one-armored player. And two more will follow. Gabe spotted another. Does he know about the third? Yes, he does. Gabe's got all three, and it's down to G2. Likely just to die here. So they don't have a whole lot to save. That's a great shot from Jax, but any more past this point would be ridiculous. Bomb has been planted. <sighs> It's not going to happen, is it? MSL holding down this angle. It's all left on to Amanek, and he is quite the distance away. Now, I don't want to say this is an undoable clutch, but Kigo, what do you reckon? 1v4, P2K, T-spawn. I think we can write this one off. I think we can say that North, they've put a 10th round on the board. They've reached double digits, and now they sit three behind that of this G2 squad. And it's scary, man, because you think about some of the games that G2 had back at the road to Rio and a reoccurring problem for them yeah. well, there was that a lot of these times in like four on three scenarios or four on twos in particular, it felt like they would throw it away. I think it was a G2 nip game where that became like really, really present. Uh, so this is like, you know, this isn't the first time we've seen G2 falling apart, even when they have these man advantage. Yeah. And that's scary because, you know, if being up in a four on two or a four on three isn't enough to win you the round, then you're very much relying on these individual players having big moments. And while they've delivered us a lot of them, we've had aces from the likes of Hunter. We've had Kenny come in with one. 
you know, if, if the individuals aren't stepping up or if North are able to just rise to the level, then it's a scary place to be in for this G2 squad. And suddenly nothing's a certainty. This buy is weird as well, right? Like, you know, Jax has 600, doesn't have a kit in a round that G2 don't have really any utility. Like if a bomb gets part of, they're probably saving anyway. But when you have the money and you're buying full, you may as well get the kit considering you have none. So I always, I, I hate it when people don't buy kits. At least, at least one per team. Like that's all you need. You can communicate where that gets dropped. You pick it up most of the time like one at a bare minimum i think especially you know when you're on a full rifle round like this so let's see i mean we'll, we'll know because if it comes back to haunt g2 it's going to be plainly obvious so right now Jax is in a great position to get a kill this may be why he doesn't have a kit if this was his game plan if he had a kit it would get lost up here he should be able to get one at at least but flashes could render him useless from this position north are ready to split A, a re-smoke on short. They set up their utility on the short side. Jax is ready. There's the off. That's a big kill. Jax can't follow up though. Instantly traded by Christo. Luckily enough, Hunters push close to the smoke and North have to go. It's their full commitment. Oh, there's spam, but Hunter's not going to reply. He's trying to dodge the bullets and they are finding damage. Gade is going to finish it off. So the man advantage back in favor or favor of North once again. Nexa oh. in the bomb site gets dispatched off. Kenny trying to hold the cross. There's very little time, but he's not able to find the bomb. And so a plant comes through. It's Kenny S in a 1v2. Does he want to attempt this? He might give it a look in at the very, very least. And with players still challenging in the site, there's a chance for Kenny now. First kill presents itself, but now he's just looking for Cajun B. Cajun, hidden. Where on earth is he? Kenny's pondering. Kenny's wondering Ooh. and not able to land the flick, but he's been given a second chance. And you don't want to give him too many of those, but Cajun answers the call and steps up in the 1v1. 11 now on the board for North. They are grinding their way back into this third map slowly but surely. The fight is not won yet for G2. Oh dear, four in a row and then calling a tactical pause. That's when you know North are really believing in themselves right now and they've got an anti-eco to follow. Wait, I just saw a buy from, from someone, at least on G2. They're buying here. They do not have the money to fall by. So I'm going to be very interested when we cut back as to as to how they're, they're choosing to approach the situation. Because right now, with that buy, with that weak, utilityless, kitless buy, it didn't happen. It came down to a one-on-one -on -one and North... We'll take it over the line. Now G2, tempted by the fact things got close in the last. But it's not like they have control over the North economy. It's actually only a hero weapon. It's on Kenny. I, I've got to wonder if that's even like, you know, why really at this point? When Kenny's been hitting all these shots of the AWP, is this a panic buy? Is this a uh, you know, hero rifle? If so, it's a Famas. It's not even an M4. So I, I'm not a fan, but we'll see what Kenny can do with it. We'll see if he can make it worth his while. Could be a miss buy, but I don't want to assume. 11 rounds for North, two away from being equal to that of G2. Cajun's holding spawn for the wrap. One thing that is pretty cool in this round is that G2, they just went and cleared tunnels straight up. They peeked into it with the pistols. They didn't really have much to lose on that front. And so now they get the info that tunnels is clear. This is going to afford them a very heavy stack over at the A side of the map. North, with this long control, with MSL in the pit, they're not getting given any information that's going to lead them to believe that this bomb site is stacked. What's important for North here is that if they do decide they want to go back, if they go towards this stack and they decide it's not for them, they need to leave themselves with time. And luckily enough, that's in high supply right now for the Danes. They're going to commit them. They're so close that the choice is kind of out of their hands. They are committed to the A play whether they like it or not. And right now, they are liking it a lot. Gade locking it down. Three in the site. Jax is removed as well. And North... 12 on the board, one away from tying this up. And now, as a decision of buying that Famous, Kenny not going to be able to invest into this round, even though the rest of the team are. He's only got a Famous moving forward. Quite the downgrade when you think about some of the AWP shots this man's been hitting. A tactical timeout called in for G2. Yeah. There is a chance that Amanek could drop an AWP Ooh, over. Maybe it's all calculated, right? Maybe I'm just an idiot and G2, they, they, they've been thinking about this two rounds in advance. They were like, Kenny, you have to get the hero gun. Then you drop Amanek a, a, a FAMAS and he buys you an AWP and you're all okay. And maybe you get a, a kill with a FAMAS anyway. Like, but... You know, it doesn't really matter anyway. It doesn't make a difference into that previous round. And Amanek doesn't buy the AWP, so it's not going to be a factor here either. Kenny is still on the FAMAS. And, and now I think back to that FAMAS by last round. I go, well, he could have an AWP here. And on the most important rifle round of the game, I'd rather like Kenny on an AWP. But right now, 
He's left to just his fam ass. Jax has left a lot of extra money in his bank account and, and hasn't bought a kit, Hugo. So are you, are I'm going to start screaming yeah. a second. Like, really, <laughs> top of my lungs, like, full ream. Of yeah, maybe something, something like that, that maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see if it comes back to bite them. Again, it could not be a problem, Harry. It might be forgotten, but it might be one that we don't let G2 forget. That was a little taste of the scream, but we only get the full thing if this continues. North. Looking to tie this up, and boy, what a comeback it's been from this squad, right? There was a time where they were, what, 13-7 down. And now they sit one away from equalizing it out. And, and more importantly, if they win this round, they won't just be equalizing it out. In my eyes, they're taking the lead. Not only is the momentum in their favor, but the money will be gone for G2. Their buys have been a little unpredictable, though. So I don't really know what that means for the G2 squad at this point in time, honestly, Hugo. <laughs> yeah. They're setting up over here at Catwalk on the north side. Kenny holding Goose. He's only got one of these palm tree flashes that you love so much. I do love them. Let's see if that's enough to make a difference. Also, keep your eye on Hunter, because this guy living up to his name right now. Well, actually, the Hunter very much becomes the hunted there. So I do apologize for falsifying the... Uh, Achievements to that man. Amanak coming in with the trade. We'll at least leave this in a four on four. And this might prompt North to just hit the go button. Yeah. They've spotted another man at cat. They're trapped here, so they've got to get into the site. And Kenny flashed in for the peak. Does drop one. Man advantage now with G2. Oh, and Kenny with the famous is. shuts down three. My word, we were questioning the famous buy, but of course it all makes sense. Kenny, yeah, famous main, then the orc main down beneath it. Uh, but the famous head and shoulders his best gun. Yeah. Look at him go. Yeah, two rounds ago, Kenny said, guys, I don't want an orp in that crucial round. I actually want two famouses because I can provide way more value with two famouses. And well, the first famous does nothing, but the second famous, it does everything. So it makes up for the nothing, Harry. And he even picks up the orp of MSL as well. So Kenny, I never doubted you, brother. Not for a second. Happy birthday. And congratulations <laughs> Happy on Happy birthday, round. throw that in. Yeah, you know. That's a streak though, bro. Guys, did you all know it's Kenny's birthday today? Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. if you've said that one enough. That is true, Harry. Money, money, money. Wow, I didn't know that either. So that's a, that's a fun fact. I imagine that's right. Deagle, armor, most M249. expensive weapon. M249. Is that the most expensive weapon? Yeah. What's auto at? 5,000. Good stuff, Harry. That's why I come to you. Zeus kit. Zeus G2 kit. You need to learn about that second one. <laughs> uh, and then pretty much everything. Nades, yeah, obviously. And then you're golden. That's it. You've done it. Expensive nades only, though. We're, we're talking mollies. We're talking smokes. We're talking HEs in a singular flashbang. But we are back into the action. 14, 12, G2. Break the five round streak of North. And North, oh dear, it might be a B rush. They might want to end it all here. But a Molotov will put a stop to this play in. Well, they're just going to press the go button again. They don't care what G2 have to say next. Sir. Oh, he's going to send them packing. He's dropped one. The Orp tagged as well. MSL is 10, but he has got the entry that's opened up B. Both players dead. Christo coming in through mid. The man on a mission in the back line. He could win this round with this play, but it's being watched in the smoke. Amanek is looking. Oh dear, I don't know if he can, he's going to see the barrel. Crystal needs to look into the wall, but he's found his timing. He's found his chance. Jax has gone right past Christo, stalling. One, two, Christo making it happen. And it's just on Hunter and a one on two. He's got to respond. He's got to force this fight. He's done that at least, but Cajun is playing the bomb and Hunter has no idea where he is. Flash in for Hunter. Tries to see if he's in window. Anticipates there was going to be a repeat, but it never arrives. Oh. And Cajun just hidden on the platform. Solidifies the round for North. 13 on the board. And this game getting even tighter. North are not ready to ease up. It's Christo, the new, new boy on the block. The new boy donning a North jersey to make that round happen. This is what we've all been waiting for, Harry. The comeback of all comebacks. I can't believe North have taken it this far. And they might push it over the line as well. Grouped in B, but not committing to the rush. It's a solo player there. G2 don't expect that to happen again. And I don't blame them. That's the first B round we've seen from North in some time. Long has been so good to them. But now North are moving back into a more of a default setup. And we haven't really seen too much of this in this T side. Taking Catwalk late. G2 have a double setup here. Gabe is flashed out middle. He hears the cross into CT. He doesn't want anything else to do with it. Remember, Nexa and Jax, they are up in this position on cap. 
That's where North are going to try and end up. Even if they hit B, you want Catwalk because you don't want to. You don't want to get fast flanked, right? If, if G2 have Catwalk and then North throw B smokes, G2 are going to flank you so quickly. So North at least to need to push them back off of the stairwell. But in doing so. G2 are committing to fights. They're not playing fullback. They're not playing to survive. They're playing for the bloody end. They're looking to kill North here on shore. No flash available. T1 comes. Nexa gets a kill. It's a double trade. Jax has dropped the bomb, and that is huge. He has a smoke to buy time, to buy position, to set up the AWP of Kenny that's also here on the catwalk. And right now, North have 40 seconds to not only get control of this bomb, but to get it down in his sight. Oh, Cajun's helped out by removing Amanek over at the B site. However... Well, this would lead them to have the B bomb site with no resistance. The real problem is that this bomb still belongs to G2. They always seem to find a way back to it. And now Ooh. Kenny bested by MSL in the head to head. Oh dear, Jack just about gets down into CT. No, you're While kidding. he gets down, so do the rest of his team. Jax, 1v3 required. They're pushing up through Cat. The bomb plant has come in with seconds to spare. And North, oh, they've recovered God. this round. They've taken it back. 14 on the board. Christo has had some incredible lurks in this T side. Like, you know, looking at that B round, a couple of rounds ago for North, where he hides in the mid smoke and he lets Jax walk past and takes two and even stalls Hunter out. Right there, he waits long the entire round. Hunter also waits long the entire round and then realizes at 20 seconds, he should probably play A, he should probably play that bomb as, well, no one's coming from long with 15 seconds left, right? That wouldn't make sense. No, it wouldn't, you're right. And that's exactly what Christo does. He comes from long. He kills Hunter on the A site. MSL wins the, it, you know, it's such an important kill to Kenny with the AWP. If he misses that shot, the round's done. So, I mean, that's just a case of everything that needs to happen for North happened. And great game plan to actually get that bomb back under control. OT, OT, it's on the cards here as we get into round number 29, 14 apiece. That's what Trace thinks. But I think it's time to start the rounds over again. I wouldn't say no to a little bit more counter, Hugo. I wouldn't say no to it, but are these teams prepared to go the distance? That's the question we've got to ask. And we're into this four on four out of the gate. Now, Christo immediately puts it back in favor of North. That's because he's been holding on to long like uh, a dependable fifth would. He keeps his eyes fixated on the prize and he reaps the rewards. So now, man advantage for North. They slow it right down again. And this must feel so grimy to play against. They're really making you work to build back into this on the G2 side. Jackson and Amanek teaming up in mid, looking to go for this push. And if they do it, oh. they're not gonna like what they find on the other side. I tried to warn them, but Gade is here and he's holding it down with the AK. He's not budging and Gade, it looks like he's on rails, man. Yeah. <laughs> he's just a cart with a gun attached to him. And my goodness, it's all it's all pre-planned. He's nailed every shot. Next, uh, 1v4 required north. Might be about to reach match and series point here on Dust2 in a game where they were down 13-7 at one point in time. Yeah, 12-6 as well. Every bad number we've got them for north, except this one, 15. They found it. There's no way Nexa can put a stop to this. It's a save round. I mean, this round was an eco for G2. Remember, they're playing for OT with this buy. And for sure, they can get us there. One round for G2, more than attainable. They're going to have everything they need in terms of weaponry. Hopefully kits as well. And even if Nexa doesn't get away with this gun, it's still fine. That's not a problem. So he can look for access if he wants to make his score look a little bit prettier. But remember, uh, you know, kills aren't going to have any impact into the money of North going into what will be round number 30. Nexus save is successful. And North, it's map and match point. This is such a big win for North as well, especially in a group of Danes, right? Three Danish teams, Astralis, North, Heroic, and of course G2 as well. And for North to potentially pick up an opening series here over the non-Danish team, well, that would set them up very well. And it would be the two Danish teams finding victory today that have both have to make very, very short notice roster adjustments. Yeah. So that's kind of wild when you think about it. Christo was only 10 years old when CSGO released. Yeah, I actually had a little deep dive for Christo's history. Uh, I looked through HLTV. Uh, this guy's 18. He 
His first official was when he was 14 years old. Like, I can't even comprehend that, like playing at a, at a level that would be classed as an official match and being 14. Like, what a talent. He's been playing this game for some time, despite being a young gun. And right now he's fit, fitting well to this North Ruster, right? He's been, uh, been coming in on a lot of nice work on the T side, just filling the gaps more so. Not being the star player, but that's not what North need. Right now, it's Gade at the top of the board, 24 and 19. AZ certainly showed up earlier as well. Right now, North are just a round away from taking it over the edge. Notice they are grouped B right now, but that bomb's in spawn, so it won't be a commitment off of the back of the round. Solo B set up for G2, but heavy in mid means rotations are available and fast as well if they want. Fighting for it. They're going to move both Kenny and Amanek back towards middle. They do it with a flash as well, so North actually don't see the cross. They have no idea which side G2 are on. And he's going to flash himself in for a peek. And him and MSL, they'll exchange a shot, but no damage found. This is the round that either starts it all again or the round that closes this very, very back and forth third map and the series. North are either going to walk away winners with Christo making his debut here for them. Or alternatively, run this clock back again. Mid control taken by North, very, very slow. They're keeping in uh, in current trends. This is how they've been able to see a lot of these rounds through to completion. One thing I think that's pretty important to bear in mind, though, is that no opening kills have presented themselves yet, right? Like North, they've normally been pretty good at dispatching of a man early on and playing around this advantage, but that has not been the case here. G2 are playing very, very reserved. And now, with only 15 seconds left, North, they've got to commit to the A play. They've got to get in. And all these shots have to land, because if they don't, it could be a disaster. Hunt has been deleted, but Kenny is very much still a problem, Ooh. as he so often is. But the bomb plant is afforded. Gade, at least, wins that fight. It's a three on four for G2 to keep the dream alive. And Jax dealing with MSL on that peak. Now has a lot to offer, but once again, Christo, we've said this man has been good at lurking. We've said he's had some impact rounds. Well, in this one, he has solidified the post plot for North. Comes in on the wrap, deletes the man. Amanek in the 1v2. He has to stick this defuse and they need so to take him. Cajun oh. swinging out, 